Uh, good afternoon, 21 minutes past two. Have you ever wondered how libraries choose their books? And how many versions do they need? And what happens to all the books that they need to get rid of because they've run out of space? Uh, well, Sophie Green is the stock librarian for Suffolk Libraries, a published author herself, and I think might have my dream job. Sophie, am I correct? Is it a dream job? It's a wonderful job. Hi, Louise. Yeah, it's my dream job too, so I'm really lucky to have it. I'm the children's stock librarian at Suffolk Libraries. Even better, you get to do the amazing children's books as well. Do you have total freedom or is there like a sort of head of libraries that tells you roughly what you've got to get or can you just go mad with the Suffolk Libraries credit card? <laughs> we, have a, we have a stock policy that we adhere to, but we have fa- fairly... I mean, the thing with libraries are they're all about accessibility, so we do buy most things that are published that we can afford to buy because we want to have the widest choice for our borrowers that we can. So I think we have quite a lot of freedom, really. So when you then, when it's kind of like buying time, is, it, is, is there a buying time or can you just buy willy-nilly all through buying, the year? Buying time is all the time now. There, there are times of year when more books are published, so October is, um, is the biggest month for, for publishing and there's another little peak for children's publishing in April. But we're, we're buying books every day. We buy books as soon as they're listed, we order them and we buy books when our borrowers email us or contact us through a library and ask us to buy a title that we don't have. OK, so this is interesting. I didn't know that. So you just buy automatically ever, ever book any book that's just being published or do you have like a catalogue going oh I think that looks good the new Richard Osman's out we'll get four of those how do, how do you actually decide? Um, well we have, we have criteria that we work to so we'd be looking at who the publisher was whether it was a popular author um, whether they'd we had other titles in stock that had loaned really well. So, I mean, there are thousands of books published every month. So we probably only buy a proportion of those, but we buy all the really popular ones. For example, the Richard Osman latest one, We Solve Murders, we've got over 100 copies in stock. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah. you might have one more when I finish with mine. <laughs> now, what about the other end? Because there might... And I'm thinking now of that old Yellow Pages advert for J.R. Hartley's fishing book. What about the random books that are like a beginner's guide to upholstering toilets or something really niche like that. I mean, what, do you then go and get the sort of most unique books you can find as well? Um, if somebody asks them, something like, what we're always thinking when we're thinking about uh, what to buy is, will someone else want to borrow it or would it be good value for us? Um, so if, if we thought, sometimes you get a book like that, there's a strange niche title that suddenly becomes really popular if it gets a review in a newspaper or something or someone recommends it online. But generally speaking, something like that, if we could find a, a new copy of it to buy and we thought it might be borrowed, then we would, we would try and get hold of one. And do you ever get emails from your boss, like, I don't know, is it like, a, I guess, a CEO or the, the CFO going, Sophie, you've bought too many books again, you've got to send three back? <laughs> no, thankfully we don't. No, we've got a really supportive boss. We have like a head of our uh, content audience team and then we have like the super boss, um, head of that boost. Um, but yeah, no, we, we get nothing but support really because we're, we're kind of very well experienced and skilled in our, in our buying. So we generally try and make a good choice. Um, if anything, I suppose sometimes we buy too little of something, but we've got a great system in Suffolk wherein we have like a monitoring system. So if something is really in demand, it triggers us with a, with a report to buy more copies. So what we've established today is then, Sophie, you are allowed to buy as many books as you want for your job and no one's going to stop you it is a dream job isn't it? <laughs> it's like a made-up dream job now here's the thing what about there's only so much space in the libraries um do you are you buying when you're buying are you buying for every single library under suffolk libraries and you're sending them out or do you have one particular library that you're responsible for and then you're all fighting it out between you no, that's a really good question. Well, we buy for the whole county. We have a system in Suffolk where books move between libraries. So if you take a book out in Capel and return it to Hadley, it will stay in Hadley for a bit. But the good news is, because we have county-wide stock, our reservations are all free. So you can go into Capel Library, order any, li- any book from any library in Suffolk, and it will be delivered to Capel for you for free. That's brilliant. It's but great, what, a- what about when you start to run out of space? Because if you're bookshelves are like my bookshelves but obviously on a much bigger scale you're going to start to have random piles that just start start to become decorations by the side yeah. of your wardrobe with a plant on top yeah, what happens to the books when you run out of space well we we do have to withdraw books we for every book we add 
a book has to go in because there's only a finite amount of space. But a lot of those books go because they've read to death and they fall apart. Um, occasionally we get books that aren't returned or are lost. Um, but the books that we withdraw just because they've had their time and they're not being borrowed, we, we, we sell them. And if we can't sell them, we try and find them a good home somewhere like a school or maybe a job centre so people can have a browse of our books even when they've, they've stopped having a Suffolk Library's life. Oh, that's lovely. It reminds me of the episode of um, Friends when Phoebe wants to save all the Christmas trees that nobody <laughs> wants to buy. Um, so you're an author as well, Sophie. So do you, are you not tempted just to bank 15,000 copies of your book? I would. I have only... no such morals about it. <laughs> that would get me in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I would get a phone call then. Um, yes, no, I'm, I'm not allowed to buy my own book, but I work with a colleague um, called Brandon who orders all the adult stock. And, um, and so when it comes to buying my books that goes over to Brandon to do. Ah, nice. Okay. Um, so then, Sophie, what should we be reading in terms of uh, little ones, maybe looking to Christmas and getting some books? What was the sort of hottest children's book that you put the order in for like 17,000 copies of this month? The books that we have to buy absolutely hundreds of copies of now are things like anything by Jamie Smart, Bunny versus Monkey books, um, Dog Man, Basically, comic books and graphic novels are huge, so they'll be on everyone's Christmas lists. Um, we also have some really beautiful um, illustrated Christmas books that will be coming into stock soon. And we have on our website, we always promote what our newest our newest books in stock are. In fact, we have a monthly newsletter, and if anyone goes on our website and scrolls to the bottom, you can subscribe to it, and then you'll get heads-up knowledge of everything that's coming into stock, including the new Christmas books, which will be very popular, and, and shortly we'll be having books for Halloween. Sophie, if I don't turn up for work tomorrow, everyone will know it's because I've <laughs> turned up to your office to be your apprentice. Uh, Sophie, thank you very much. What a wonderful job. Sophie Green there, Stock Librarian for Suffolk Libraries. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And in the meantime, why don't you check out one of the other videos here on the side. And until next time, bye for now.